Hey, I'm Sean from The Velvet Attic. Welcome back. I am busy doing a whole lot of videos and trying to get them out there for you guys. And I've done the two previous videos of um, using our new Velvet Attic painting tape. Um, our vintage painting tape is absolutely stunning. It's a painter's tape you can use um, to create perfect stripes, really. And if you follow the techniques I've shown in the other videos and this one, you can't go wrong. I, the first video I did was the French grain stripes. And um, the second video I did using two different size tapes um, with three colors, basically our du parfum pink our Art Deco Brown and La Magie Light Cream on the stenciling and then floated some shadows on there. So I've done those two videos which you can have a look at and see how I used everything. So what I'm going to do here now is I've actually taken an MDF 3mm board. I'm doing them on the boards because they're just easier for you guys to see um, when the camera's on the tripod and you can see what I'm doing with them. Um, our vintage painter's tape comes in four different sizes, which I think is the most exciting thing of all. We have a 12 millimeter, a 24 millimeter, 48, and our big one, the 72. And of course, the 72 and the 48, especially the 72, will be fantastic for using on your walls. Um, if you're going to stencil halfway up and put a dado rail on and create that effect, I think this will be fantastic and 48 mil. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to work with our 24 mil. I'm going to keep a uniform size um, uh, size stripe as I move across my board. In other words, I've pre-base coated my board. I put actually three coats of white on. I know it looks like it's not totally with that shadowing, but um, it is a solid coverage here. And I'm now going to lay our tape down. So I'm going to take the 24 mil. Um, this is one I've been using, so it's it's used a lot. When you get it, you're going to get 40 meters of it. Um, so I've got two rolls I've been using that I must work down. So I'm going to be using them. Um, and to start with, I'm going to show you how to do it, and then you don't even have to measure and use um, rulers and pencils and levelers and you name it. Just take the width of our tape, line up with the end of the board or your surface, start on one end, and put tape down. This one I'm going to fold over. In other words, this stripe is going to remain white. Put some hairs here from demonstrating stenciling and the new brush is fit. So that's why you've seen that. Then gonna take another one, same size, like that. Put that right up against the end of this one. Okay. So I'm not gonna fold him over. Take another one. Join it up at the end of this one. You don't need to use rulers and things, and you'll get them straight. Line up, sorry, I'll in there. Yeah. This one we will fold over because that's going to remain white. Okay. And then we pull the middle one off. And from there, we put that one down again. Here's our one little piece that helps us space evenly the whole way across. And this is how is it's the easiest way to do it. Um, and using our painting tape, of course, it's just so much easier than masking tape. Um, it doesn't buckle when you paint it. It doesn't bleed underneath. Um, you can. It doesn't pull your paint off. We're talking about a high quality tape here. Um, so I, I really prefer using it myself personally. You can see I've used up rolls of it already. <laughs> um, it just makes your life so much easier. 
Okay, I'm getting from the wrong road now. Yeah. That one going. Do we just keep doing what I've started off doing? Laying down your pieces. Folding over the ones that are going to remain white. To start with. And then just keep removing that middle piece. And as I showed before with um, the other videos, if you happen to be doing it on any surface that is has no tooth, in other words, it's not porous, um, and you're worried about the tape pulling paint off because you haven't had enough time to let it stand and cure, then um, what you can do is you can actually stick it down onto tablecloth, towel, t-shirt, whatever. Do that a couple of times, you'll take off the excess stick and you won't have to worry, but you shouldn't really anyway have to worry. Yeah. Gonna put that one lined up with that one. Also. White ones again, so we're gonna fold them over. You see, I'm just going all the way across the board, okay. And I'm going to keep them in the sizing because I want to just do a uniform one. But with all our different sizes now, you can actually do gradients. You can increase size and decrease size or come from the middle out and decrease size. Um, I think it's just limitless actually now with the variety of widths and what we can do with them. So I'm very excited about this. Very affordable and um, yeah, our stockers should be getting them in their shop soon. And they can also order for you if you need it. They will be going onto our website, busy with. Um, we just it's just a matter of loading all the products on now. So all the testing's been done, which is fantastic. And I think you're going to love our website. Um, lots to do there, very pretty everything we do okay so you can see this tape is just absolutely exquisite quality um it just works beautifully so when i get to the end there i'm just going to pull that over a bit i'm not really going to worry too much about this bit here and obviously you want to make sure everything is down um, as i showed in the other videos I um, you can use your nails you can use a flat spoon um, I definitely like using the eraser I'm gonna do it again um, so I just take an eraser and I'll run across that edge and the other edge This way you know it's down properly. The spoon works too. I just find you've got to actually press hard with the spoon in that. Um, this isn't. It's just a case as if you're rubbing out pencil. Um, you don't have to go mad. Just Here we go. I'm going to shake those off. Make sure you get all the shaving bits from the rubber off or the eraser off and then I'm just going to wipe those off so we get a little bit of a cleaner table. I know it's not clean to you but it's <laughs> better than nothing. All right so wherever the tape is is obviously going to remain white for now. Um, and then we're going to start painting here. Uh, let me just get my white quickly. Okay, I'm working from, from a one litre. So this is our one litre Chantilly Lace White um, that I'm working from. Beautiful, creamy, our paints are very creamy, they're stunning. Um, fun to work with, you can thin them down with water if you need to. I'm going to take a synthetic nylon brush 
uh, basically similar to number 10. Uh, we sell the synthetic brushes right from the number 26 size, which is big, um, to the number 12, here's your number 12, your 10, 8, 6, 4 and 2. Uh, these flat brushes are fantastic for painting things like stripes and embellishments and um, base coating embellishments, that kind of thing. So perfect for it. This is the equivalent, it's just my personal brush, so I'm just using it. Um, it's the same size as a number 10 would be. So I'm going to go straight into the paint. Start on one side. I'm going to lift you a bit because I need you to see and obviously why it's not the easiest. But I'm basically painting the paint towards my stripes again. You'll see them in my other videos. Paint into your tape and then smooth it out. You don't want ridges. So what this is doing is it's going to, if there's anywhere under the tape where it can bleed paint, um, if it can bleed paint, um, it will take your base color. Therefore, when you do your contrasting color, you're not going to have any bleed through underneath um, your tape. So paint towards the tape and then smooth it out. Okay. And then you need to do it the other side as well. This side, pulling into that piece of tape. And then just smooth it. Don't use tons of paint, just a little bit. Make sure it goes there and then smooth. You have to smooth it out. I'll lift it a bit so now you can see there. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do across all of these now. I'm going to carry on and then you can see what I'm doing. And I'll probably speed it up a bit with the music on. Okay, so I'm finishing up here on the last one, smoothing it out. I've pulled into both sides of each tape stripe. Now I'm going to put that aside to dry and I'll be back with you shortly. Hi, right, so welcome back. Um, we've now let our paint dry. This is where we painted into the tape on both sides with the base coat color, which was our Chantilly Lace White. We've left the uh, tape on, don't remove it yet. Um, and now we're going to start painting the contrasty color. So I'm using our Marquee. This is our vintage chalk paint. Our Marquee, which is a chalk, uh, a chalk, a charcoal color. Um, it's a beautiful charcoal color. Um, and I will be using that now um, to paint in to the white areas you see on the board. So I'm going to have a lot of contrast between my white and my dark gray here. And I'm going to be teaching you a faux technique you can use that can sort of bring it all together instead of them looking very different. Um, if you want that stark contrast, of course, then you just leave it like that. But I'm just going to teach you um, this technique and just, just give you ideas that maybe you could use somewhere along the way in a piece you're busy with or project or something like that. Okay, so you can see it's a beautiful Dinkum charcoal. <laughs> okay, so it's our darkest gray we have in our range. We've got a range of 79 colors um, to our vintage chalk paint range, um, which is literally the largest range of colors there are, uh, or there is in South Africa. And um, a lot of mediums and blues and that and sealers that can complement in our range. And obviously now having our uh, vintage painting tape uh, you can do so much it's just like endless so you watch the previous videos on it where I show you different ways of doing stripes um, I'm going to incorporate a lot of different techniques where you learn how to use our products the correct way um, you can also attend workshops with our stockists um, they will teach you how to use it the right way 
Um, and obviously support your stockists in your area. We, that's the reason we have them is that it saves you from having to take couriers and things like that. And you can ask them questions and be there on hand and see the products and things like that. Um, they can also order for you if need be. So I'm going to carry on. I'm using the number 12 synthetic uh, nylon brush. So I'm going to use that and our charcoal gray. I've dampened the brush, but it's not dripping wet. It's just damp. That way we won't build up dry skins quickly. And as I've said before in the other videos, if you want smooth finishes and you don't like the streaks through your paints, it's the brush you're using, no matter which chalk paint brand or acrylic paint or metallic paint or whatever paint you're using and varnish. If you're getting streaks, it's the brush you use. So make sure you use a nice synthetic and nylon brush. Okay, so going straight into our charcoal, we'll have to do a couple of coats obviously. I'm just going to start painting in my stripe all the way to both piece, both ends of the tape. You mustn't skimp, you need to make sure you reach it even if you go over slightly. Okay, and then you need to smooth it out. So that'll be our first coat. And I'm just going to do the same on the others. And this will need to dry, obviously. Don't put it on too thick um, because that can also cause problems. You want a nice, even coat of paint on, not too thick not too thin, just apply it and then release your pressure a bit on the brush and smooth it out. Okay, so this is our last stripe I'm busy with here. Our first coat of marquee put on. Here we go. Okay, so we need to put this aside to dry. It won't take long. Um, as soon as it's dry, I'll be back with you and we'll apply a second coat. Hi, so welcome back. Um, our first coat is dried. The wet bit you're seeing there is actually just on the tape, not actually on the stripe. So I'm going to continue with the next coat. I didn't rinse my brush out. I just soaked it um, because I was coming back to do the second coat. So I'm going to continue with our marquee, which is our charcoal gray. I'm going to apply our second coat. So just using my number 12 synthetic brush, flat brush, I'm applying a smooth even coat of marquee to striped area, the open area where the tape is. I'm going to paint all of them like that with this second coat. Don't use too much paint. Number one, it takes a long time to dry. Number two, it can give you problems if you put too much and you're rigid. Now you see with normal masking tape, you wouldn't really get to put in your second and third and fourth coats or stencil or faux technique or whatever you were going to do. You wouldn't be able to do that because um, the masking tape would be bubbling a bit and... Um, crinkling and that because it's so wet, uh, whereas this painting tape doesn't do that. Um, so we've got time, we can do all the techniques we want, we can even come back tomorrow and carry on with our techniques and then take the tape off and no problem. So I'm very happy about this tape, I'm excited about it, I'm excited for you guys to use it and see how easy it's going to make your life with stripes. And stripes are such an integral part of redoing furnitures and creating that vintage look and French look and <laughs> it's all there. Um, so you know, just embrace it like I do and just I love the fact that I have four different sizes. This I've kept uniform with the 24 mil, but I mean you can mix sizes and as I said before you can start with the thick and then descend down across a surface also absolutely stunning to do. Okay, there's our second coat. That now needs to dry. So as soon as that's dry, I'll be back with you again. Okay, so 
I'm back. Welcome back. Um, I have applied a third coat and I'm now going to take my tape off at this point. Okay, so even though the paint is still wet, you can take off the paint, the, the, the painting tape now. Now, as I showed in previous videos, when you pull, you pull away from the stripe, not into, pull it away. See the difference there, I'm pulling away from the stripe. Fold it over, like that. and then I can pull easier. So there's number one. Yeah. I just want to lift it and show you. You can see it is absolutely perfect. Perfect stripe. Every time, if you just follow my technique here with our painting tape, can't go wrong. Okay, so now we're between two color, two of the same color, so we can't pull away, so we make sure we pull it straight. And you don't have to rip it off fast, guys. Just take your time, make sure you're getting it right, and pull it off. And there's so much contrast between the white and the gray, the charcoal. It's just beautiful. But I'm not going to leave it white. You can if that stage, if that's what you're looking for, but I'd like to show you a technique um, that I found very effective and I love it. I did it on a metal cupboard in our studio and um, it looks absolutely stunning down the side of the cupboard, obviously long and big stripes. These can become sample boards for uh, clients to see when they come here. Keep going and removing your tape. Now, before we do the Pro technique, we do need to allow these grey stripes to So we're going to allow that to happen and then we will do the faux technique. But as you can see from here, if you've ever wanted to do charcoal and white, this is the effect you get using our Gentilly Lace White and our Marquee Charcoal. Remember, if you'd like to become a stockist of our products, you can get hold of me. Our Facebook page has the email link you can just email. And we are open to working with all our stockists. We don't dictate your business to you. We, you don't have to be a shop front if you're a studio from home, that's fine too. We don't do contracts and uh, we don't do minimums. I don't think you can enforce that in this time, the economic time we're going through at the moment. And I'm not going to fleece my stockists. So our stockists, I like to work with them. We work together. Um, I do not dictate people's businesses to them. And yeah, if you'd like to become a stockist, get hold of me. This last piece off. Of course, it was folded under, so that's why it's a little tricky. Okay, there we have it, guys. Isn't that cool? <laughs> a lot of contrast there, and that in itself is absolutely stunning. Um, 
So I'm going to let this grey because I can see it's still a little damp in sections. I'm going to let this dry and as soon as it's dry I'm going to come back and do that faux technique with you which is almost like a faux stone technique um, which will just combine the two that there's not as much contrast be between it. So I will come back and do that shortly with you. Okay so welcome back. Um, our paint is now dried. Um, I'm going to lift it up you can actually see the stripes are absolutely perfect um, thanks to our painting tape and the technique of course and our paints just work beautifully with this as well so now I'm not done obviously you could be left at this stage um, if this is the look you're going for I would like to show a faux technique that I'd like to um, you know teach you guys and it shows you how to use another product of ours so I'm going to be using our glazing medium it's our vintage glazing medium. On the shelf, you're going to see this separate. And don't stress, it's not because it's old or it's fraught or anything. It does this. It's quite normal. So before you use it, you're going to give it a good shake up. Okay, and make sure the two mix up again before you mix your glaze. Okay, now the mixing ratio is 10% paint for whatever amount of glazing medium you're using. I, for example, I'm going to show you here, have a, this is our old labeling, um, I took a marquee charcoal and I added the glaze in here because there wasn't much left, but pretty much 10%. So if you've got a 250ml of glaze, then you start at 25 mils of paint and then you can take it from there. If you would like the paint to be stronger and not as transparent then you can increase your amount of paint um, if you need it more transparent which i doubt with 10 percent um, you could add more glazing but you can also mix small amounts i mean i've mixed this in our art deco which is our dark brown because they're colors i use often so i'll mix a whole bottle it goes a very long way it doesn't go off don't add water to it if you add water the worst thing for paints is water and air so Stay away from those. If you're going to add any water to something, use distilled water, not tap water. So what happens is when you um, so when you have a look at the glaze, I've just written on my bottle of glaze because obviously I need to know that it's okay. I just want to show you, it is much more runnier. I don't know if you can see that. It's moving easier. Okay, it has a distinct different smell to it as well. And what the glazing medium does for you um, and the beauty of it is if you try to do this with water and just thin the paint down with normal water on a palette or in a bowl, um, water tends to dilute your paint but you get it almost looks insipid and there's, the vibrancy is gone of the color. Now with the glazing medium you get to keep that vibrancy of the color, it dilutes it for you, it has a retarder in the medium which gives you more time to work on the technique without it drying quickly um, and that makes a big difference because obviously with thin water on your paint that's just going to evaporate and dry out so fast especially with our summers and that um, so you can't go wrong with glazing medium um, and we sell it in the 250ml and a 1 litre it um, lasts very long I mean I mix these this is our old labels and we've already had our new labels out for a long time now and this is still perfect um, and you would know if it's off because the minute you open the bottle it would smell terribly so yeah this is the glazing medium I've done a 10% mi uh, mix to it in other words I have poured in um, 250 mils of glazing medium to the basically 25 mils I had left in here and I mixed it and shook it all up and you do need to shake it up um, before you use it and you do need to shake it up if you're doing big sections as you go along um, because obviously as I showed you before the medium tries to separate for when it's standing still for a long period so make sure you get that mixed up before you start with your technique so now I'm going to horrify everybody and paint all over my lovely white stripes <laughs> It's always, everybody always gets very upset when I do this. Okay, but this is a technique I want. Okay, so I'm taking the glazing medium now on my brush. It's very runny, so it's going to go a long way and you don't need a lot of it. Okay, 
and I don't have to be accurate here because it's the same color as my charcoal stripe so it's not going to affect my, my, my stripes that I have so I'm just going to slap on some glazing medium here Make sure you put it on and you cover everywhere like that. Everybody's going, no, you're ruining it. Wait. <laughs> I just want to bring it more together, okay? So it was an effect, a technique I didn't want as much contrast happening between my charcoal and my white. And this is going to allow me to now have it. So you can see that still stays wet, it's fine. Um, I'm actually going to do this whole board at the same time. You can work in sections when you work on the side of cupboards and that. Um, I usually do sort of half and then half on the top down. Okay. It doesn't matter if you go over the grey stripe. That's fine. Okay. Then I'm going to take... You can use t-shirt material. I'm going to use these cloths you tear off a roll. I'm not going to wet it. I'm going to leave it dry. Okay, and I'm going to scrunch it up and make a lovely little ball out of it. Okay, I don't want that in. Do that again. Go. So make a nice little ball out of it. Not 100% smooth or anything, just something I can hold on to and work with. Okay, using it dry, and you'll notice I'm going to move my hands the whole time so I don't make a set pattern into my glaze. So starting, I'm going to hope you can see this. Maybe. Up, maybe. So starting, I'm going to start patting, and I start turning my hand as I'm patting, and I'm not pushing hard, and I'm not trying to push the the glaze. I'm just patting and turning my hand. The beauty of this is that even if it goes over the grey stripe. It is fine because all that texture just creates and is part of this effect. So you're creating almost a faux stone technique, working with the dirty cloth as I go. If I go to cleaner cloths, I'm going to take off more, obviously. Um, and I don't necessarily want to take off more because I love what's happening here. It's creating interest, it's creating um, character to the stripes. That's, that's what we want. That's why we do faux techniques, is to create character and interest and we don't just have a plain color. So yes, I'm all for plain colors too, but this I just thought is so easy to do. I've done it up the side of a cupboard. I'll actually take a picture. I used our Il Trovatore, uh, Tori, the uh, Fawn Brown. I base coated it with that on a metal cupboard. And then I did this technique with our Art Deco dark brown. And what I'll do is take a picture of that for you, and then I'll put it at the end of the video, and you can actually see what the contrast of that coloring and how it looks. And it looks like an like a stone technique. It really does. So now I just want to work across it. I don't want to move it too much, but I just want to sort of even out a bit where it may be not moving as easy. I don't want set things or anything symmetrical happening here. I just want to blend, smooth it, tap here and there, lift a bit, and see. You and and I must tell you, if you feel like you do this and you go, oh, I've just like completely and utterly stuffed this up, I'll tell you, just get yourself a damp cloth with water and just wipe over it. Um, the water will reactivate it and you can just get the excess off and just run with the technique again um, and if you feel that it's too light and you've taken too much off well just let it sit for a while dry come back and do a second coat here's the other beauty you can make it stronger you can you could do a dark stronger fading up to a lighter on the stripes as you go the sky's the limit here. Yeah. So I want to lift this for you and see if you guys can see how absolutely gorgeous that looks. I know the white and the gray is also very effective because there's so much contrast happening. But this is just a lovely technique as well, just to show you, you know, that you can do the stone technique into the stripes as well. 
that you've created using our painting tape. And there you have it. So this is like stri basically your, your stripes and then a faux stone technique on top of the white stripes. And if you didn't want too much contrast and keep it down, you could use our light parry, which is the light gray parry. Um, and you can use that as a base coat instead of white. And if you wanted a totally different color, you could do that too. You've got 79 colors to play with, so really, <laughs> it's endless. Okay, so uh, like I said, I've been doing all these striking videos to show you how to use our um, new painting tape, which I'm very excited about. It's working beautifully. It was tested thoroughly before we even got the stock in. The stock is in, it's being packaged. Um, which will be going out to our stockists um, available in multiple sizes so we've got a 12 mil that's our little thin one perfect for jewelry boxes edges of frames you name it um, I'm, I'm gonna do a video on a canvas showing you how to decoupage our 80 gram bond paper and I want to do stripes around the outside edge of the wooden canvas and I'm going to once again be using our tape there so Look out for that because I'm quite excited and I think it'll look beautiful and I want to show you guys how to decorate that paper. So we got 12 mil, 24 mil, uh, where are you? 48 mil and 72 mil. That's the big daddy. So those are the four sizes available, 40 meters per roll. Um, very much affordable, just it's going to make your life so much easier than masking tape does and you've got the different sizes to play with as opposed to other painters tapes and that so yes it'll be coming out it'll be up I will obviously promote it on our page and all those sort of things so the video I've just shown you is the faux stone technique our previous video we did multiple size varying sizes with colors with stenciling with floating our first video, I did the French grain stripes for you, which is just so crisp and clean. Um, and obviously used our Ivoire, which is our cream color, looks like rain sack color. And I used our Baroque Burgundy for those stripes. And then I used, well, I measured the 48 mil, but I used our 12 mil tapes there. So look out and go back to those videos and have a look if you're not sure how to use it or what to do. If you have questions, please feel free to contact me. I'm more than happy to help wherever I possibly can. Um, the tapes will be coming into the shops packaged, hanging like so. Um, and yeah, we've got the brushes, we've got the everything. <laughs> so I'll be in touch again with some more videos. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned lots. Um, and happy painting and striping and creating and, and just, it's so good for your soul. Enjoy it. Okay, bye.